Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! When we last left off, we were in the middle of the battle for Naraka. Our heroes and the army of Naraka are fighting off against the army of ogre demons led by Gorgon Ghidra. We've already seen the first part of the battle, and so far things seem to be going well. Only one person has died so far. At least as far as we've seen. Now, let us continue. Hmm. Luckily for us, the battle appears to be going well for our side. However pessimistic this may sound, I honestly fear that Gorgon's forces would be slaughtering far greater numbers of our soldiers than this. Well, the monsters certainly are trying to achieve that purpose from the looks of their aggressive fighting styles and the noxious sounds of their cries of blood bloodless. Sigh. It is a blessing that Miss Hartshorn had, with our daughter's help, made it possible for our side to acquire so many of these tactical advantages over the enemy, else we'd likely be losing six knights to every two of Gorgon's soldiers, rather than just three to two. It is interesting that you know that we are losing that amount specifically. Jersey should be proud to know that she has had such a tremendous hand in minimizing the loss of precious lives in a so terrible a conflict as this. She is a much more clever girl than she gives herself credit for, and Jersey is to be commended as a hero for what she has done. She is. Considering that our numbers exceed well over one and a half times that of the enemies, if the fight proceeds at this rate, we should be successfully driving away the force of a darkness from our home by sundown. We can only pray that Gorgon Ghidra will have the seeing, will have the sense to sound the retreat as soon as possible once he sees that he is losing, so that more lives will not be wasted than is absolutely necessary. I am proud of our knights, Paprika, my husband. Paprika and my husband. Even in the face of so frightening a rival, and knowing that with our great lack of experience in fighting many of their deaths are self-assured on this day, the Knights of Naraka nevertheless fight as bravely as they know how in order to save others whom cannot defend themselves at all from having to suffer the same cruel fate. Still, it is sad that a battle has ever had to occur in this once peaceful world of ours at all. Speaking of Gorgon, I haven't seen anyone out there who matches the description that your elven spies gave you of him. Anywhere. Isn't that a bit strange, your majesties? Hotaru peers through his binoculars. Yes, you're right. Good observation, Miss Paprika. I hope this doesn't mean that he's got a particularly nasty surprise in store for our knights, or for our friends from Earth, for that matter. Sir, the fighting is now growing dangerously close to our current position. Might I suggest that His Majesty, the Queen, and Milady Paprika move to a safer location? Indeed. We should all retreat back to our soldiers before someone in the enemy army spots us. Oh, by the way, I would just like to point out... Horses. They totally have horses. Lorena shields her eyes against the sun. Hmm? What's that out, out there, over the horizon? Paprika happily says, It's the Admiral's ship! Oh, I just knew he'd come to our rescue in time! Hotaru looks down at his watch, and he has arrived only one minute away from noon, just when, he, when we said the ideal time would be. He must have planned the time to make his big entrance with amazing precision. Lorena has a relieved laugh. Ha <laughs> ha!
Paprika telecommunicates through her earpiece. Admiral William! Can you hear me all right? Aye, your voice is coming through quite clearly, Miss Felice. Please inform the good king and queen that old Willie has arrived on the battlefield to save the day. Yes, sir. Paprika's voice is somewhat muted as she speaks to Hotaru and Lorana. Wow, this strange little gadget Harrison made for us last night is really something. It allows you to communicate with others over great distances, yet it is so tiny that it fits snugly just behind my ear. I wonder what that weird buzzing sound is that keeps occurring every time I talk into it, though. I don't know, but you kind of have to have it whenever you have walkie-talkies for some reason. William has one of those teardrops. I guess I couldn't expect a spiritual gal like her to understand the concept. Lorana's head is close to Paprika's. Admiral, you still there? William adjusts his earpiece. Yes, Queen Lorana. We're glad you came back in time to help us. Bless you, sir. You must be in great need of sleep after traveling all night. Aye, but there's time enough for that later on. I'll just be getting to work on the little scouting assignment you've entrusted to me. But first, I can see a pack of ochre demon scum bullying a few of your knights on the edge of the lake bridge from here. If it pleases your majesty, shall I first test the effects of anti-ship artillery on ochre hide? I've got a clear shot on them from here. By all means, sir. If it will save our knights that you can see fighting over there, fire away! Yes, ma'am. Alright, let's just see if those steel-bodied freaks can resist a, resist a cannon shot to the face as well as they can another man's sword. Hmm, I'd best calm down a bit. Paprika will give me quite a scolding if she finds that I am enjoying kicking butt like this. Hopefully she and I will both live through this in order to, that that may happen. I miss hearing her scold me like she does. That is a weird thing to miss. Nope! I don't, I don't think that they can withstand a cannon blast that well. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, right back. Apparently, Harrison is, in fact, the tech guy. I suppose, then, it's actually kind of a good thing that he isn't a chicken anymore. I imagine building these walkie-talkie things would be a little bit diff difficult with chicken feet. Although... He might have been able to manage. So now we got another group here, and we got one of Rachel's archers. Princess, too many of us are already lost, and these blasted ogre demons refuse to fall. I don't know how much longer we can hold out against them. We are fighting a losing battle. Princess Rachel says, I understand your fear of them. But we simply cannot run away and leave the ones we are supposed to protect at the mercy of the enemy. Please be brave and stay at my side, my noble servants. A second archer. We will follow our beloved princess all the way into death if need be. And we won't leave our brothers and sisters who fight before us to die alone. Ah! Here they come! Don't die on me, sisters! The demons are rasping. Die, daughters of light! The second female knight. Gah, they're t -t too strong. Nice of Naraka, fire! Oh. 
Well, now we know where some of the custom sprite resources have been going to. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. You really saved our heights just now. No! Now the lasers have spotted us! All three female knights to Rachel's north assume a defensive stance against the Lancer to, to buy Rachel's company some time to make a decision to stay or run. Princess! That was the enemy His Majesty warned us to flee from. We must take you away from here now. Please come at once. No, not now. Oh gosh, I was not expecting this decision. Um, does the guy mention this decision? Uh, after the fight, you will see William Aiden in the attack shortly by Princess Rachel and her archers. Once the stronger foes show up, you are given the option to run or stay. In any case, um, the smarter option would probably be to flee, considering she promised. So, let's go ahead and do that. You must go now, your highness, everyone. I know you wish to stay and protect us, but you all promised our king and queen solemnly that you would turn and flee if Gorgon's lancers came for us. Please just go. No need to waste the lives of everyone here. It is better for only a few of us to perish rather than all. Sorry, Miriam. So the second knight is named Miriam. We cannot hold it against you all for simply keeping a promise. You just make sure to keep the princess safe. Don't worry about us. We'll take care of this. As little as I can bear to admit it, she is right. We must hold our promise to my parents. Everyone retreat now. I am right behind you. Rachel quietly says, I just won't be retreating with you. That's all. Okay. That's kind of a bad thing. Um, I don't suppose those knights are going to eventually turn around and notice that she's not with them. Forgive my selfishness, everyone, Father, but I cannot help but feel that I must do this as Princess of the Holy City. The Ogre Lancer powers up. <laughs> I just want to do like a Dragon Ball Z uh, right now. What? No! The first female, female knight cries in pain. Ah! De deflected? Yeah, there's probably a reason why... You, the king and queen wanted you and the other archers to run away. Oh, and um, now she's fighting on her own. Okay, uh, she can totally handle this. What she got? She got nothing. She might be able to handle this. She's got a double attack, so that's kind of nice. And a miss. Miss is a good thing. Okay, I'm not entirely sure why she was able to shoot the thing with arrows during the fight, but not during the cutscene, but we'll take it. Princess, we're so sorry. Are you okay? Rachel's on her knees out of breath. Ugh. Ugh. I'm alright. Somehow. Man, you shouldn't apologize. It is no wonder that you both had become so stunned when such a monster as that broke through your defenses so suddenly. I hope no more of them are planning on coming. 
Second Night Miriam sadly says, He slew poor Tira. What? Miriam! Kathleen! Behind you! And I guess Rachel is totally defending them on her own. I guess they were totally caught by surprise. Well, Rachel seems to be doing well for, her, for herself, so at least there's that. Huh. Huh. Yeah. Do not give up, Miriam, Kyleen. Even if a thousand more of them were to come, we, Pat, can win. No, Princess, you are already badly hurt, even though they kind of missed you. Please, I beg you to stand back and not further subject yourself to danger. It is a miracle that you have survived against two Lancers as it is. You know, she's probably right. We got probably really lucky with that RNG. So the third night is Kyleen. Too late! They're coming at us again! Not again. Princess! R run! Oh, this is Swanir. Who is leading the army right now. Yeah, that's a bad thing. Ha! This is too easy! Stupid woman, you are merely playing dress up in your father's armor. Oh, now I hate you. Uh, help! Ra Rachel vainly reaches a hand out to them. No! Kyleen! Miriam! I haven't met a single man or woman from Naraka who could last two seconds against me from the very first of trumpet call. I probably could have taken on the entire 2,000 of you weaklings at myself, or at once, all by myself. Well, 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 look at the surprise that the cats dragged in. Princess Rachel Atus Foxloon, correct? Who would have guessed that you would be on the battlefield waving the white sword of love over her head, just like the rest of this pathetic lot? As you have just seen for yourself, a sword of love that you never intend to drench in the blood of your foes will not do much to protect you from monsters like myself. Now there is no one left among your soldier friends to defend you. What will you do? Uh, how about those guys over there on the left? Girls, whichever. You... You murderous bastard! Sweener laughs. Such abusive talk is unfit for a princess, my dear child. Didn't you know that? Or did your loving mommy and daddy simply forget that one lesson on teaching one's daughter how to act ladylike? I'm not... I'm not afraid of you! Ah, dear child. Why can't you simply accept the truth that you could never in a million years hope to overcome my power and just die like a good little princess, okay? I promise not to make your end too violent if you surrender to me now without further struggle. Rachel still shudders in fear, but adamant. No, I won't. You say that now, little one, and you even dare to say to the face of your destructor that you do not fear him, but look at how you tremble so all the while. Mocking sigh. Oh well, I gave you the chance to be sent into hell after all of your friends I've already slain with at least some shred of dignity still clinging to your royal garments. Don't say I did not warn you. 